uh, let's talk about the market because uh, uh, it's clearly lost some ground now trying to recover once again 16500 is where the nifty is now and the bank nifty up 550 emerging market uh, equity strategist adrian movet is now joining us uh, adrian good afternoon thanks a lot for joining us uh, uh, good to have you on the show uh, uh, adrian what have you made of the recent news flow uh, of course we have to deal with the uh, with another news flow next week uh, with the fed meeting uh, but the whole russia ukraine situation the geopolitics the the big surge in crude prices and the impact on emerging markets. Your thoughts? Yeah, there's quite a lot going on. So the sort of medium term story is obviously a Fed beginning to normalize policy. Uh, we still have the recovery from the pandemic uh, story in place, which is one in which uh, the consumer will be consuming a lot more services and less physical goods. Uh, you'll see good GDP data out of Europe and the United States on the back of that. We've then got this very unpleasant geopolitical um, headwind out of Ukraine, uh, where we've seen a massive impact on both commodity and on energy prices. I suspect we've probably seen the peak in the oil price. Uh, that 130 print was when there was real concern that there would be complete sanctions against Russian oil. Um, as you were highlighting earlier on the show, we're beginning to see a response from uh, the broader OPEC community, uh, and there is some space for them to increase production. Uh, let's also remember we are moving into the spring period, uh, so we've gone past sort of peak energy use seasonally. Uh, so I, I think we're, we're probably in the story where the, the Russian uh, invasion of Ukraine becomes a little bit less dominant because of the dramatic impact on commodity and energy prices being behind us. And perhaps we move back to focusing a bit more on the Fed. Um, and if we look at uh, what's going on in terms of sector performance, uh, one of the very notable sell-offs uh, as geopolitical tensions rose was the financial sector globally. Uh, and part of the story there was you began to see bond yields fall um, and some more talk around, are we running the risk of actually seeing quite a significant economic slowdown uh, due to the inflationary pressures hitting the consumer? Um, and is the Fed tightening into that? Uh, I think that fear was overdone uh, and the weakness in the financials has been overdone. Uh, and I'd be looking for them to be the sort of biggest recovery as we begin to see energy prices moderating from their highs. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the 10-year is back at 1. 1, 1, 1, I think 1.9 or so. Uh, so there is, a, there is a move back which has happened. Uh, but real yields are falling, isn't it? Uh, even as nominal yields are going up. So, I mean, what does one make of that? Well, I mean, real yields are very negative if you look at uh, headline inflation numbers. Um, but this is, you know, this is the hard dynamic uh, to follow here because let's not forget that when the price of energy goes up, our ability to consume goes down. You know, corporate profit margins uh, quite possibly under threat in certain sectors. And all of those will dampen demand. And so it's probably not, you know, when this happens, when you see cost push inflation and erosion in purchasing power, then that might be sufficient to slow down uh, economic demand, which then will reduce the inflationary pressures without having the central bank needing to aggressively raise rates and put them into real territories. And boy, if we did go into real territories with the current headline inflation numbers, those would be very high interest rates, right? Mm. Well, uh, Adrian, you know, from an Indian market perspective, uh, we have, uh, you know, we are bracing ourselves for a good growth. We have a stable government in all probability now uh, for another term that's likely to come in there. And also the Indian markets have corrected close to 10 percent from the top. What more does, uh, you know, do we have to do to see flows come back into the country? Because that's been a bit of a worry. The kind of foreign selling that we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you know, that, that's, that's clearly a hurdle for us. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're in a bit of a bear market globally, right? And we're, we've seen some very weak performance, particularly out of more expensive tech stocks in the United States. Uh, Chinese equities are doing very poorly at the moment. Uh, and so investors' confidence is low. Uh, and then we've had this very significant, very unpleasant geopolitical event. So you're seeing broad redemptions in equity funds, including emerging market equities. And I think India is just simply suffering from that. 
it's worth stepping back, and I, you quoted a statistic from uh, the recent all-time high. You know, Indian equities are down about 4% year-to-date. They're quite significant outperformers in the global equity environment. Um, and so I think on a relative basis, you should be comfortable with the performance of Indian equities. Uh, and let's not focus too much just on what our life high was and how much we're down from that point. Uh, when I look at Indian equities, they prove to be quite resilient. Uh, and that's interesting because, you know, typically uh, one would expect Indian equities to underperform uh, with the oil price where it is today. Um, and you're possibly you're talking here about uh, 4% of GDP balance of payments, uh, um, current account deficit, possibly going to balance of payments deficit. Um, you know, those are normally quite big headwinds, and I'd have actually expected to see Indian equities down more year today. Adrian, that's an interesting point you're making, uh, that we are in some kind of a bear market and don't worry about how, how much, uh, you know, was the peak. Uh, in, in that case, uh, what could be the downside? Uh, and I'm talking about world equities and perhaps even the Indian equities. What could be the downside uh, uh, by your reckoning? Yeah, so look, let's let's look at really what's going on here, the dynamics you've got. If you're in energy and commodity stocks, there is upside, and that's certainly what we've seen year to date. I think I'm probably more comfortable at this point uh, having a bit more weighting into commodity rather than necessary energy stocks uh, with the oil price probably peaking around 130. Um, I also think you're going to be making money in financials, and financials are not expensive globally. Um, and uh, as the yield curve normalizes, rather than it, you know, there's some fear that it might actually invert because of people's fear on stagflation, I think uh, financials will do well. Uh, the broader tech sector, unfortunately, I still think that is in a derating phase. Um, you know, these stocks are still quite expensive. Over the last five years, you've made a lot of money still, even after they've come off. Um, and with an environment of uh, gradual increase in interest rates, discount rates are going up, and high P multiple stocks are probably going to continue to decline. Mm. Uh, right. <clears throat> uh, Adrian, uh, so just to go back to that point, you ba you're basically saying that uh, we are we're going to generally have a strong economic environment, no real big concerns of a slowdown, and a little bit of policy normalization as well from central banks, which was how we came into this year. Uh, is so that is the base case. So then, I mean, the market setup and how you approach things, uh, you know, sometime from now, we'll go back to uh, trading those dynamics. Is that what you're saying? Yes, but I, I think it is worth acknowledging that the risk of slower economic growth has increased. And the mechanism for that is that the consumer has less purchasing power. Um, and the consumer in the emerging markets probably has a bigger dent to their purchasing power than the consumer in the developed markets. Um, so we should be conscious that the risk of an economic policy mistake has risen uh, with the big increase in energy and commodity prices and food prices. Well, the final question, Adrian, before we let you go, uh, auto stocks globally, as well as here in India, well, they have been facing the heat. Input costs have gone up. Uh, you know, there are uh, various challenges coming in from the EV space as well. How would you approach them globally, auto stocks, as well as here in India, if you've had a closer look? Yeah, so, uh, look, I, I don't think you can generalize as a strategist about auto stocks. There's very different strategies at each company level uh, in terms of how they're dealing with the transition to EV. I think the challenges for these companies are going to be much more along the lines of supply chain uh, rather than demand. Uh, there is very strong demand for vehicles globally, uh, particularly for uh, more economic vehicles and electric vehicles. The problem in satisfying that demand is have you put in place the supply chain that allows you to deliver the key components, whether they be batteries, electric motors, the semiconductors that are required in these cars. And you know, I look at this as a strategist and I say, look, actually, the analysts are going to add a lot more value here in knowing the details around the supply chain management uh, that various auto companies are doing. Um, I like, I mean, broadly, I, I think the story about the move to EV, the fact that um, solar and wind is much cheaper than generating electricity through other sources 
is all one of the most the sort of exciting technological changes I've seen, um, and that this is a medium term story to play. But the execution at the company level is going to be absolutely key. And there's really only one car company, which is Tesla, that so far has shown that it can actually deliver electric vehicles in volume. All right, Adrian, uh, thanks so much for stopping by and filling us in uh, with your quick take on the indices and your approach to India. It's reassuring the way you said that, in fact, uh, you know, India has been resilient given the kind of headwinds that we have seen, though uh, downside as well could open up if things uh, you know, deteriorate from here on. By the way, just take a look at the Nifty. We went